All right, guys, so we got to talk about Sleepy Joe Biden, who may be sleep because who knows? Maybe he's getting high, right? As he made an announcement today that he is pardoning all federal convictions for simple possession of marijuana. And he's doing this right before the midterms, and we all know why. He's doing it so he can buy votes or to get the Democrats out and vote during the midterm. Same thing that he did when he announced that he was forgiving student loan debt. Okay. That's exactly what this is. And I want to talk about this. Uh, but before I talk about it, I want to play this news clip so that you guys can get a better understanding of what exactly is going on here. Take a look. I am Andy Mack. We are hearing some big breaking news out of the White House right now relating to marijuana and um, President Biden with an executive order. I want to take you out to the statement right now uh, as we are learning that the President Biden announcing an executive order pardoning anyone with simple federal marijuana possession charges. This a statement from the President POTUS. As I said before, no one should be in jail for just using or possessing marijuana today. I'm taking steps to end our failed approach, allow me to lay them out. He continues on in a very long statement here that we will read on live now from Fox. First, I'm pardoning all prior federal offenses of simple marijuana possession. There are thousands of people who were previously convicted of simple possession who may be denied employment, housing, or educational opportunities as a result. My pardon will remove this burden. It continues on here on live now from Fox. Second, I'm calling on governors to pardon simple state marijuana possession offenses just as no one should be in federal prison solely for possessing marijuana. No one should be in local jail or state prison prison for that reason either. Third, he is also, we classify marijuana at the same level as heroin and more serious than fentanyl. It makes no sense. I'm asking the secretary there and attorney general to initiate the process of reviewing how marijuana is scheduled under federal order. Of course, I'd also like to note that the federal and state regulation change. We still need important limitations on trafficking, marketing, and underage sales of marijuana. Sending people to jail for possession Possessing marijuana has upended too many lives for conduct that is legal in many states. That's before you address the clear racial disparities around prosecution and conviction. Today, we begin to right these wrongs. Of course, uh, big news from President Biden and the White House on this ongoing uh, dilemma there, decisions there with them. Uh, we continue on here as it's a it's a big decision there, as you heard him lay it out as President Biden issuing an executive order, announcing an executive order, pardoning, pardoning anyone with federal simple marijuana possession charges. That yeah. So what Joe Biden is doing here is basically a political stunt. And I'm going to tell you why. Well, the reason why is because basically nobody is in federal prison for just simple possession of marijuana. Okay. That's not really a thing. In fact, according to the Office of National Drug Control Policies, um, in 1997, the year which the most recent data was available, just 1.6% of state inmate populations were held for offenses involving only marijuana and less than 1% of all state prisoners, 0.7% were incarcerated with marijuana possession as the only charge. According to the U.S. Department of Justice Bureau of Labor Statistics, an even smaller fraction of state prisoners in 1997 who were convicted just for marijuana possession were first-time offenders. The numbers on the federal level tell a similar story. Out of all drug defendants sentenced in federal court for marijuana crimes in 2001, the overwhelming majority were convicted for trafficking. According to the U.S. Sentencing Commission, only 2.3%, 186 people received sentences for simple possession. And of the 174 for whom sentencing information is known, just 63 actually served time behind bars. So effectively, this doesn't really do anything, right? I mean, it, it does in the sense that if you do have a you know simple possession charge on your, your record, a, a federal charge, and that's it. From my understanding, the way that Joe Biden is wording it, 
uh, it seems like that is going to get a pardon. However, don't trust my word on that. That is my interpretation of what he's saying. The details in regards to how this is going to work are not very clear yet as the announcement was just made. So with that being said, what, what do I think about this? Obviously, again, I, I think this is a political stunt, even though I, I do in, agree with it in, in principle, right? Because I don't think that anybody should be in jail for just simple possession. However, you got to keep in mind the people that are actually serving prison time for simple possession, a lot of them aren't just there because of simple possession, okay? They even pleaded down to simple possession uh, after they were charged with doing something more serious than that, or they have a long history of committing crimes. So with that being said, what this signals is that uh, Democrats are probably going to go whole hog on decriminalization and then legalization of marijuana, which leads me to the main point of my video. What is the Republican Party doing, <laughs> right? What are they doing? Why do they continue to allow Democrats to get layups like this? That's a serious question. I, I made this analogy before, and I think it definitely applies in situations like this. Republicans never take layups, right? They never score easy political points like the Democrats do, right? They allow Democrats to take layups. And Democrats, for the most part, they miss their layups. But Republicans, all they do is, is play defense. That's all they do. They never actually try to get ahead of Democrats on an issue that a vast majority of Americans agree that marijuana should either be legal recreationally or medically, okay? Even Republicans, I think it's about 50%. Right, a little bit over 50% of Republicans agree with uh, legalization of marijuana. A vast majority of Republicans that agree with this are, are young Republicans, right? And Lord knows the Republican Party, they need younger voters, right? They need young people to vote for them. And their continued opposition to legalization, especially while the Democrats are pressing towards that, really is holding the party back, in my opinion, okay, in terms of that outreach to younger voters. Right. I, I don't understand for the life of me why Republicans won't just get ahead of this issue and just go ahead and legalize it, which is what should happen. I mean, let's be real. I mean, even in a state like Tennessee. OK, I went to the mountains in Tennessee. I forget the name of the town off the top of my head. Uh, a lot of you guys are probably familiar with it. In that town, there was like a marijuana shop. Right. I mean, I don't think weed is technically legal in Tennessee, but there's like a marijuana shop selling some strain of THC that is not illegal, but is not explicitly legal either, right? It's basically a loophole, but effectively they're selling weed, right? We're talking about Tennessee in the mountains, okay? This is what they're doing. So don't sit here and try to tell me that this is an issue with the base. It's not an issue with the base or what the voters want. It is simply that the Republicans are in bed with Big Pharma, as Big Pharma stands to lose billions of dollars with the legalization of marijuana. That is the only thing I can think of in regards to the Republicans' opposition to legalization. Because again, it can't be the voters, right? The voters obviously are just like, eh, whatever. Even the Republicans that are opposed to it are like, okay, I don't agree with it, but you know, we're supposed to be the party of freedom and personal liberties. Okay. Why are we still opposed to this while, you know, alcohol is legal? And obviously you have the people who are uh, pro alcohol, right? They will drink on camera. Okay. And also at the same time, advocate for marijuana to stay illegal. <laughs> cough, cough, Michael Knowles, right? Even though alcohol is objectively, objectively worse, right? Worse than weed. Okay. And then obviously you got the people who just want to make all drugs illegal, right? But that is a vast minority of people, right? That is a vast minority of people. Republicans, again, th they just can't pick up easy W's, right? And here's the thing. It's not like this is an issue for me in which I'm going to go out here and vote for somebody based off whether or not they agree with legalizing marijuana. <laughs> Obviously not. I would probably never vote Republican if that was the case. But, but the issue is with those people who are more in the middle, the moderates, the more libertarian leaning uh, young people who also kind of lean conservative. I mean, because let's be real, most young people that, you know, are conservative, they're, they're actually really more libertarian, right? They're, they're not really as traditionally conservative as they are libertarian. That, that is why the younger people in the Republican Party uh, overwhelmingly agree with <laughs> legalization, okay? While the older people in the Republican Party don't, right? So, I mean, look, here's the thing. 
Um, when you're going into the voter booth as a moderate in a tight race against a Democrat, if you are a Republican that is pro-legalization, that is one less reason somebody has to not vote for you. You know what I'm saying? Because again, most people agree with this. And it's not like you're going to lose votes because you're pro-legalization. No Republican will lose votes because they say, hey, I think weed should be legal or decriminalized. You're not going to lose votes. <laughs> but the opposition of legalization or decriminalization for the Republican Party makes you think that they believe that they will lose votes. Although the polls don't <laughs> show that. Again, <laughs> weed is being either decriminalized or legalized all over the country, including red states, for a reason, okay? And this is happening through ballot initiatives, aka the people are saying that, yes, this should be decriminalized or legal, okay? But Republicans at the national level are still behind on this issue, and I really, I, I just don't get it. I just don't understand. And it's extremely frustrating. This issue right here in the student loan debt issue, the Republicans are extremely frustrating on because they don't really have any real solutions, and they're letting the Democrats pick up easy Ws over them to the detriment of this country, for example, with student loan debt forgiveness, they're letting Democrats pick up these easy Ws while they don't really have any solutions. Again, the, the, the marijuana thing is simple. Just say, hey, we're, we're pro-legalization. We don't care if Democrats are in power when it becomes legalized, because eventually it will. We're, we're just, we're going to do it. Because it's not like Republicans are doing it when they have power. So eventually it will be legal. And when it does become legal, Democrats are going to take all the credit for it and you ain't going to get none of it, right? So, I mean, I, I just, in my opinion, I think this is an issue right here that Republicans just allow Democrats to score layups on when, when they just shouldn't, right? It, it doesn't make sense for the Republican Party that has a large amount of libertarians. I don't see why they continue to let Democrats score easy Ws on issues like this. This should be an issue that Republicans need to get ahead on, right? That, that's my biggest frustration with this, Okay. Um, so let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.